Uh, we're joined right now by Labour's Shadow Policing Minister, that's uh, Sarah Jones. Good morning to you. Morning. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I want to talk to you about an announcement of a Labour policy today, but first up, I'd like to talk to you about Nicola Bully, if we could. Uh, a body has been found a mile from in the river, a mile from where uh, she was last seen over three weeks ago. We haven't got a formal identification yet. Obviously, the fear is that this is Nicola Bully. Your reaction? So our thoughts are with those two girls, aren't they, this morning, uh, and, and their family. This must be absolute agony and this has been a particularly high profile case uh, there has been huge speculation uh, across social media uh, over the last three weeks we need to leave the police now to get on with the job of identifying uh, who that is whether it is Nicola and what actually happened but I think our thoughts have to just be with the family this morning uh, for the you... most horrific experience that they're going through do you share any concerns that many of the public have had about the police investigation and the police search for Nicola Bully well, certainly it was unusual, uh, the amount of information that was shared, uh, but equally it was unusual, wasn't it, the amount of speculation on social media and the information that was being put out about what may or may not have happened. So I think the focus has to be now on letting the police get on with the job. Uh, and then there will be questions to ask, quite rightly, uh, and the Information Commissioner is looking at this already as to what information was uh, published and put in the public domain and what wasn't and whether the right, uh, whether there were issues and whether there were um, mistakes made but neither of us know what has gone on behind the scenes neither of us know uh, about the detail of this investigation we'd be speculating to, to say anything else but let's let them get on with the job and then for sure we need to look and, and, and see whether there are any questions to be answered indeed well let's talk about an announcement you're making today on behalf of the Labour Party it's a clamp down on neighborhood drug dealing which so many people will see as a, bl a blight in their local neighborhood Mm, absolutely. About 13 million people believe that their neighbourhoods are blighted by drug dealing and 6 million people have actually seen uh, drug dealing take place in their communities. We've seen a 30% increase in uh, town centre kind of vandalism and, and crime over the last year. And these are real problems that affect real people's lives and have been ignored for too long under this government. So we are announcing a raft of interventions. 13,000 police and PCSOs in our neighbourhoods, on our streets. Data-driven uh, hotspot policing, it's called, where we use the data available to flood those areas where we know there is drug dealing uh, with police so that we can crack down on the problem. More powers for the police uh, to close down crack dens and then a raft of powers around antisocial behaviour including new respect orders to try and tackle this problem that really does impact on so many people's lives but we've got to the point where people don't even report it anymore well i was just going to say that, that to you because I mean, I, I mean i'm, I'm reading what you're doing and you've got, there's more detail here than what you're saying and you know all sounds good and i can't imagine there will be anyone who'll be going well that's not a good idea i love you know love it but no one no one believes that these things will actually happen under any government anymore we haven't got enough police we don't see police on our own local streets if you do um, have a, a crime and again most burglary would be to fund drug uh, drug use uh, police won't turn up uh, most shoplifting fund drug use Please don't turn up. You have to steal, I think, more than 250 quid before they even bother turning up uh, in, in a local store. So I think a lot of people say, great idea, but in practice, nothing's going to really mm. change. Mm. So I think if we accept the premise that nothing's going to change, then we fail. We have to have higher expectations for what government can achieve and what policing can achieve. It's not acceptable that people are seeing drug deals at the end of their street and in their town centres, that they're not going into town centres because they don't feel safe, that businesses are closing early because uh, of the worries about crime and antisocial behaviour. So putting 13,000 officers in our neighbourhoods with a guarantee that that's where they will be, because we know as soon as there's any pressure on policing, it's the neighbourhood police officers that are taken out of their community so we want to guarantee to keep them in the community and we want to give the police more powers through things like respect orders to tackle persistent uh, offenders because uh, they say to us they're frustrated that they don't have the powers they are frustrated that the powers that uh, were changed under this government are too weak uh, and they don't allow the police to do what they want to do but we, we can't accept the status quo we have to do better and that's what Labour has been trying to talk about over the last few days what we're actually going to do in government okay. so that people do see that 
more policing will make a difference and better policing will make a difference. Okay, can I just ask you, with Nicola Sturgeon's shock resignation last week, a uh, new First Minister uh, is going to be appointed, well, elected probably in, in a matter of weeks' time. If the new First Minister, a new SNP leader, decides to bring back this gender recognition bill to try and have a, a, a standoff with the Westminster government, uh, if they try to bring that in to, uh, say, basically uh, children as young as 16 can self-identify without any medication, any surgery, anything, as the opposite its gender that would allow for instance as was voted down a a rapist by definition a man if you're able to rape you are a man being allowed in a woman's uh, prison if they self-identify as a trans woman would what well, should uh, labor MPs in Scotland MSPs should they vote for that measure mm. Well, first, I should say that, you know, we respect Nicola Sturgeon and the commitment that she's given over many years, uh, may disagree with her on policy, but she has led Scotland through an area, a, a time of significant change, and, and, and we would, you know, honour her for, for that. But on the bill, the bill currently is not going anywhere because it has been blocked by uh, the UK government, and it looks like the SNP are not going to take it no, but to if court. They did, so it's they they lay, Labour the MSPs back that did, measure, if they did, would be, should Labour back that again? So at the moment, clearly nobody is winning on uh, in Scotland on this issue. Trans people don't feel more supported and women don't feel more supported. So uh, what we need to try and do is find a solution that works uh, for everybody that respects women and the need for uh, uh, safe spaces for women, but also protects the rights well, hold, of trans no, but hold people. on a minute. Labour MSPs only a few weeks moment, ago voted for a measure that didn't nowhere. give women that safety. Labour MSPs voted for the SNP. So what Labour... So Labour tried to amend the bill. You voted um, for the measure. And introduced changes to it that made it better. What Keir Starmer has said is we wouldn't have introduced uh, these um, new uh, procedures from uh, age 16. That's not something that Labour would have done. What uh, the SNP need to decide is whether they're going to do anything with this piece of legislation. But no one is winning, as I say, at the moment. And no. we need to find a way forward and that's what Labour would try and do. I mean I, I do think an awful lot of uh, political leaders need to learn the lessons of this that um, uh, when you trample over women's rights by trying to be woke on on the necessary trans rights uh, you, you, you'll find that the voters ain't happy. I don't think it's about being woke it's about respecting everybody and trying to make sure uh, we can find a way forward in the same way that they're trying to find a way forward uh, in Northern Ireland at the moment that respects different points of view and protects okay. uh, everybody so that trans people can be better protected yeah. but women well, can also feel confident that they have those safe spaces both things can exist together and we have to find a way as leaders and as politicians right. uh, uh, to move that forward we'll leave that thank you very much indeed Labour MP Sarah Jones appreciate it Time. Thank you very much for joining us.